that's I'm glad you said that because when you said what would you differently tomorrow, I'd be like, I'd probably just shoot the move. <laughs>
I'd probably just shoot the move. Yeah. And this is the this is the reason why. Because you and I are committed to living a life in spirits, whatever that means, whether that means it's tomorrow, ten years, a millennia from now, who cares? Yeah. The point is we're living walking with God presently. No amount of doomsday changes the way that we live. Yeah. And so when you live that way, you see Paul, his heart, verse 12, the night is far gone, the day is at hand. So let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And there's been a sense in where you take that verse and then, hey, listen, we need to behave better because Jesus is just around the corner. You need to make sure you put on the armor of light. It, right? It's like, I don't know if this was like it for you, but in my family, it was like this where um, you're acting kind of stupid mom's watching you after school and then mom says something like you better get your act together you better clean your room because dad's coming dad's coming yeah and there's a sense of fear and for foreboding yeah. that i need to get my stuff together otherwise when dad comes home he might be angry yeah 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 and so we sometimes take this text and use it as well i guess maybe we we, we read this text and think maybe that's what paul was doing I think that that's maybe, I don't know if that's what Paul was doing. Maybe we could look at that again. But for me, that's what I brought to the table when yeah. I heard this passage. Yeah, because I read it and all right, one, it's a little uncomfortable. Jesus hasn't come. But like I said, I take solace that I'm in good company, Daniel, right? And others. And then number two, we have the book of Revelation that at least gives me a little, not it gives me confidence that there's a historical sort of, narrative that's playing itself out that there's it, still there's still things to be done yeah and that the revelation the revelation of jesus christ is a historic revelation right it's something that happened in time and it's happening throughout time the kingdom of god is forcefully advancing and violent men take hold so that the seed of the gospel is bearing fruit in this world and it takes time for a seed to become a sequoia mm -hmm. and that the last book the book of revelation is the outplay of that seed that was dropped at the beginning during the first church of revelation one playing itself out right all the way up to the second coming to where we get to the end of the book where now it's justice has come the city has come but there's a historical outplay that needs to take place and depending on how you interpret i know there's various interpretations but yet there is a expectation that he will come but he's coming throughout this historical outplay and that the book of revelation drops little markers to say hey it's coming it's coming he'll come so the idea is that if Jesus is on his way, perhaps that let's call it a 10 mile journey, yeah. uh, that he was 10 miles away, yeah. then he was eight miles away, yeah. then he was four miles away, yeah. and maybe presently he's somewhere in the range of three to two to one miles away because we can look at the historical record as revealed in Revelation and say, oh, there have been things that have been happening leading up to this point. Yeah. So it very much is true that salvation is nearer to us now Absolutely. than when we first believed. Absolutely. So that's why Paul admonishes us to walk as children of light, right? I want to highlight a couple things. One, 13, let us, wa let us walk properly in the daytime, not in orgies, right? Um, not in sexual immorality, sensuality, but 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. This is the thing that hits me is that then Paul is admonishing us, encouraging us to actually put on the person we are looking forward to coming. Oh, OK. I didn't look at it from that perspective. Jesus is off in the distance, X number of miles away. We're expecting and we're hoping that he's going to be here. And yet while he is far away, he's already here. He's here. He's present to the extent that you can put him on yeah christ in you the hope of glory right through spirit so that so that when i live i can look at tomorrow and just think ah just gonna plant an apple tree just gonna plant that because christ right? is here yeah yeah and the the reality that he is here that he's changed our lives is the hope and the waiting that he will also come yeah to be clear this isn't some spiritualization or some allegorical look at the coming of jesus as some denominations have no i think he's literally coming correct right but in the same time i think he has also literally and concretely come through his holy spirit into our lives mm. right mm -hmm. so yeah there's uncomfortableness in the waiting to some degree but then there's also 
hope and there's a confidence even though sometimes you look and you're like oh when is it gonna happen and then you know what god is still good he's manifested in my life and i have the privilege of living through him now so i'll put on the lord jesus christ and plant an apple tree you know i like how that's where the focus of the verse is because i think in my former life the attention has been to um not walking in darkness the drunkenness immorality sensuality the quarreling and the jealousy and it's all the the negative things yeah and there's i mean obviously there's a certain certain sense that attention must be paid there yeah but that's not where the focal point rests and the Uh. focal point is is putting on jesus christ and because he's going to come in his fullness you have the privilege of now not giving provision to your former life Mm -hmm. you don't have to give way to the flesh You can put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't satisfy those desires. And you can live as though he's here because Because he he is. is. Right? So. There you go. Ten minutes done. These are going by fast. Fast. NASCAR uh, fast, Ricky Bobby. Just want to go fast. (laughs) What I do with my hands. We'll figure out tomorrow what we do with our hands. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Ten minutes at a time.